This street that I actually determined exact height to till which you can go. So that was the first thing. And then they had this uh, uh, rule that you had to have a small garden in front. Mm -hmm. So it was something like five meters away from the street you can start building your house. You know, it couldn't be like right the entrance could not be right at the street. It's actually considered to be one of the most beautiful streets in, in Belgrade because here you can actually see how the old Belgrade between world war world wars used to look like you know what was the atmosphere what is it thing called wealthy people there used to be quite wealthy people you know those who actually recognized the potentials of uh, what Serbia can offer for example my father is from uh, central Serbia from a city called Jagodina and they used to have the biggest production of turkeys in Europe and they had the best turkey ever because the French used to import turkey only from them because in central Serbia you have a lot of walnut trees so they actually fed turkeys to walnuts and because the walnuts are very fatty they, you know, their breasts used to be quite succulent you know, they, they were not dry and you know those people who recognize that they can get wealthy quite, quite relatively quickly, you know. And um, there, there was, uh, I would say, at least 30 of these people who left, left all their belongings to either to certain foundations that they started or they left it to the city after they died. And that was until World War II. After that, you know, nobody really had this kind of uh, activities anymore because everything belonged to the, to the government. Mm -hmm. So if it belongs to the government, everything belongs to you. So that was a communist system. He was of uh, Serbian origin, yeah. born yeah. in Croatia, which at that time was Austro-Hungarian Empire. Studied in uh, Budapest, in Vienna, in Paris, and lived most of his life in uh, States. So I would say he was... He's a person which you can't really put in a, in a box. Mm -hmm. Very extraordinary. I think he spoke nine languages, if I'm not mistaken. Among other Hungarian, which is a nightmare to learn because I tried to learn <laughs> Finnish. I kind of didn't work. But anyway, uh, but, uh, his museum was established in 1952 because when he died, he left all of his belongings to Serbian government. And actually we didn't get that much of it because he was living in a hotel room in New York and when he died CIA came there first. So they actually picked, you know, the things that they wanted to have. Mm -hmm. But actually the building in, in which it was established, it was made in 1929. And this Simon might, inter might interest you uh, in uh, the architect who did it, Dragisha Brasha. He actually was one of the first who tried to introduce modernist architecture in Serbia. And uh, this is one of the buildings where you can see that he tries to kind of clear up 
is the same. Not to have too many academic uh, constraints. So it's relatively simple and yet it's still academ academism. But in the same year when this building was finished in 1929, in Barcelona was a um, um, world exhibition. And there in the world exhibition, every country has their own pavilion. So the architect of this building made our pavilion in avant-garde style, local folklore. And that was the time when only three uh, pavilions, like our pavilion of Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and uh, Slovenians, and the uh, pavilion that was constructed by famous German architect Miss van der Rohe, and um, Swedish pavilion were in the avant-garde style. And that year the prize for the best architecture for the pavilion uh, won Miss van der Rohe, and our professor of the history of the architecture always claims that Rashomon was, you know, the one who was chosen, but at the very last moment, the jurors, one of the jurors kind of changed his mind and then he pronounced Miss van der Rohe as, as the, the winner. So we were actually robbed of the first uh, prize for the avant-garde building. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.